Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Nishad, Assistant Professor of uh, Department of Physiology, and today I will be talking about gastrointestinal physiology. <clears throat> the gastrointestinal physiology first is the anatomy. Gastrointestinal tract extends from the stomach to anus, and the alimentary tract it extends from the mouth to the anus. From the mouth it extends up to the oropharynx, esophagus, stomach small intestine which consists of the duodenum, jejunum and ilia, large intestine which consists of the cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anal canal. What is the purpose of elementary canal? The elementary tract provides the body with continual supply of water, electrolyte, vitamins and minerals by number one by the movement of food through the elementary tract. Number two is secretion of digestive juices and digestion of the food. Number three is absorption of water, electrolytes, vitamins and digestive products. Number four is circulation of blood through the gastrointestinal organs to carry away the absorbed substances. And lastly, control of all the function by the local nervous and hormonal systems of our body. The gastrointestinal system is a portal through which nutritive substances, vitamins, minerals and fluid enter the body. Proteins and fats and complex carbohydrates are first broken down into absorbable units. The product of digestion and vitamin, minerals and water cross across the mucus and enter the lymph or the blood. Physiological anatomy of the gastrointestinal system. On cross-section from inside outside to inside, the elementary tract is divided into following layers. The serocell layer, a long tube smooth muscle layer, a circular smooth muscle layer, submucosal layer and the mucosal layer. This is the picture showing the cross-sectional uh, area of the gut. As we can see, there is the serocell layer, the muscle layer that is the longitudinal muscle, the circular muscle. Then the submucosal layer which consists of the mucosa and the lining epithelium and then is the mucosal gland. The gastrointestinal smooth muscles function as a syncytium. The individual smooth muscle fibers in the gastrointestinal tract are arranged in bundle as many as 100 parallel fibers. Longitudinal muscle layer, the bundles extend longitudinally along down the gastrointestinal tract and the circular smooth muscle, they extend around the gut. Within each bundle, the muscle fibers are electrically connected to one another through a large number of gap junctions. This is the picture showing the muscle fibers where they are electrically connected to one another by the gap junction, which allows low, very low resistant movement of iron from one, one muscle cell to the next. It offers a low resistance to the movement of iron from one muscle to the next. Therefore, electrical signals that are generated uh, that initiate muscle contraction can readily trans travel from one fiber to the other. <coughs> Branching lattice work of the smooth muscle bundle function as a syncytium. When an action potential is elicited anywhere within the muscle mass, it generally travels in all direction in the muscle. Coming to the electrical activity of the gastrointestinal smooth muscle. The smooth muscle of the gastrointestinal tract is elicited by almost continual slow intrinsic electrical activity along the membranes of the muscle fibers. The activity has two types of electrical waves. Number one is the slow waves or which is called as a basic electrical rhythm and second one is the spike potential. Slow waves or the basic electrical rhythm. Most gastrointestinal intestinal contraction occurs rhythmically, which is mainly determined by the slow waves. These are slow rising and falling changes in the resting membrane potential. These waves are not action potentials. It does not cause calcium ions to enter into the smooth muscle fibers. So it does not directly cause muscle contraction in most parts of the GI tract except in the stomach. The intensity of wave varies between 15, 5 to 15 millivolts. The rhythm of contraction of the body of the muscle of the stomach is about 3 per minute. In case of deuterium, it's about 12 per minute and ileum is 8 to 9 per minute. These slow waves are caused by, contract, by complex interaction among smooth muscle cells and specialized cells 
which are called the interstitial cells of Kyajal, which are the electrical pacemakers of the smooth muscle cells. Then comes to the spike potential. These are also called as the true action potential. It causes actual smooth muscle contraction, which are mainly generated by the slow entry of calcium and sodium by calcium sodium channels. The frequency of the wave is about 1 to 10 spikes per second and it, the duration is about 10 to 20 milliseconds. This is the picture showing the slow waves as well as the spike waves. As we know, as we can see from the picture, the resting membrane potential of the slow wave is minus 50 millivolts and, <clears throat> and the threshold is about minus 40. Once the spike potential has reached 40 millimeters of mercury, of uh, 40 millimeters millivolt, the spike potential arises and it's in the form of spikes. Coming to the new neural control of the gastrointestinal tract, or which is also called as the enteric nervous system. It consists of two parts. That is the enteric nervous system, that is the mind trick or the orbus plexus or the masoners or the submucosal plexus. The gastrointestinal tract is also controlled by the autonomic nervous system which includes the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Difference between mind trick and submucosal plexus. The mind trick or the orbus plexus is mainly located between the longitudinal and circular smooth muscle layer of the gut and its function is to control gastrointestinal movements by both excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters. Increase in the gut muscle tone, intensity, rhythm and velocity of conduction of excitatory waves. Inhibits or relaxes the intestinal sphincter muscles. The submucosal or the masoners plexus. It is located in the submucosal layer of the gut wall and its function is to control the gastrointestinal secretion. It also controls the local blood flow, causes local contraction of the submucosal muscle. That's all for today. Thank you very much.